Hey, yo, how's it going? It's Six Foot Hacks here. Have for y'all today my draft breakdown of the third and final draft of APA season number five. Now, for those of you who may not know what is going on, I'm going to do a quick recap of everything. So, this season of the APA, we were able to do three drafts in one season. We had one draft for every four weeks of the season, so 12 weeks in the entire season, so three drafts uh, per four weeks. And then, at the end of it, people that make playoffs can make one stupidly broken draft with uh, the mons from the three drafts so long as they meet the criterias and what exactly uh, the minimum and maximum of things are. So yeah, that's pretty crazy if you think about it. So this is our third draft analysis for that essentially. So hopefully this draft right here can take us to the playoffs because of course, if you've been sticking with us from the beginning, Oh, you will know, you will know for a fact that we've been having a really, oh, just a really rough start to this season, man, like, oh, if you're, if you're one of my day ones, thank you so much, because you know that I am capable of so much more of what exactly is going on right now in season five, but it's okay, it's fine, because we still have a chance to make playoffs, which I Honestly, so long as there is a chance, we will definitely be going for it. So we are currently sitting at three and five heading into week number nine. If we are able to win out the rest of the season, we are going to be at seven and five being able to clinch us in either the eighth or the seventh slot for playoffs. So we need to just barely make it into the top eight so that we can hopefully have a chance to win one more championship this generation before uh, the Gen 8 games come out in late fall this year. So I'm really nervous. I hope you will stick with me through this because honestly, I think this draft is pretty solid. Now, of course, our second draft was rather lackluster. We were able to at least get two out of four wins with it so we went 50 50 which is pretty solid and i'm hoping that this team right here will be the team that takes us on a, a winning streak throughout the rest of the season so if we do win out the season we definitely make playoffs if we lose one more game it comes down to differential and i think at that point we're fighting for only the eighth slot but if we win out we are fighting for the eighth or possibly seventh slot i don't think sixth unless something crazy happens but definitely seventh or eighth if we win out the rest of the season so let's take a look at our draft for this season of the apa so of course i did not get lucky and get a high uh pick I ended up being, I think, number 10 out of 16, which is actually so much better than being uh, 12 out of 16 as we were in draft number uh, 2. Because at least the top 10 draft people have a chance to get a really good top 10 draft mon, whether it be a uh, regular Pokemon or a non-Mega Pokemon. And at number 10, I was able to get what is probably one of my top I really want to say it's top three. If it's not top three, it's definitely top five uh, favorite draft league mons. And that is going to be Big Black Kyurem, Kyurem Black. So yeah, Kyurem Black is an absolute monster, guys. This thing is disgusting. I won a championship with this. It was a GBA D League season three, and Karen Black was able to just put in so much work. And speaking of my GBA D League season three run, I really wanted to get this paired up with Tapu Fini, so that's what I was set on for getting uh, round number two. But I knew that round number one, I could definitely get Karen Black here because it was going to fall to me. I think it was either Karen Black or Zygarde 50%. And ultimately, I figured that Karen Black might just be a little bit better because it's just so disgustingly powerful and if i am able to make playoffs kieran black 
plus Tapu Koko, plus potentially uh, Mega Gallade or Greninja is just, oh, that sounds so nasty. So I just, I really wanted to get Karen Black. And again, just one of my all time favorite Mons. It's very hard to switch into Karen Black. Of course, the big downside of Karen Black is the fact that it's weak to Stealth Rocks and that it has a base 95 speed tier. Now, of course, a base 95 is not entirely too bad, but it does kind of suck because there's so many more offensive mons that are faster than Karen Black that can take advantage of that speed stat. But besides that, there is very few walls, very few wall cores that can switch into Karen Black. And this thing, I know for a fact, will be able to put in a lot of work for us. So heading into round number two, as I mentioned, I really wanted to get Tapu Fini and I freaking didn't get it, dude. I was so upset. Oh my lord, I think the person that got Tapu Fini was John Jr. Oh, I was, oh, I was so upset. Now, now I mean, I could have got like Azumarill, I guess, but I don't want Azumarill. I don't like Azumarill. I don't want it. No, I don't want Azumarill. I'm not a fan of it. I wanted Tapu Fini. It was such a good defogger. It didn't matter that Kieran Black was going to be in the misty terrain. It was still just going to be disgustingly powerful, but he ended up getting Zygarde 50% with Tapu Fini. And that was, oh my, oh, I really wanted Tapu Fini, but I wasn't able to get it. And it, it's fine, I guess, like, it, it is what it is. But I decided to get probably the next best fairy, and that is going to be Clefable. Actually, something else that just popped into mind was uh, Primarina, obviously, because it is Water Fairy as well. But I, I wanted a more bulky and a more reliably defensive fairy type. Like, Primarina is really good. It can be a nice tank. But Clefable, Clefable is very hard to KO. You are not going to be one shot in Clefable uh, at least 7 out of 10 times. And those 3 out of 10 times, you're going to have have to be boosted or hitting it with a stab super effective move uh, well actually no i guess if you're life orb you're still boosted well yeah it's basically really hard <laughs> to get rid of clefable is what i'm trying to say this also gives me an amazing amazing stealth rocker and i am a huge fan of stealth rock so i really like the fact that i was able to get clefable here moving on to our round number three pick I realized that because I lost Tapu Fini, I needed to get some more reliable recovery because originally I wanted to get Tapu Fini and two other forms of reliable recovery and thankfully this round 3 Mon was what I was originally going to get even if I got Finny instead of Clefable, and that is going to be Donphan. I would have had Defog from Finny, Rapid Spin from Donphan. Kieran Black absolutely loves not having hazards on its side because it can come in at full HP and tank even more hits and just be a bigger, bigger threat. But that is not the case as we unfortunately got Clefable, but we at least do still have Donphan, which I honestly want to say Donphan is one of the most reliable stealth rockers in the draft league format. I was skeptical at first too, but trust me, Donphan is a monster. And in a format where you can run any Z move, I think that actually does make Donphan that much better because offensive Donphan is definitely a giant threat that my opponents are going to have to deal with. This also gives me another really good reliable stealth rocker. So moving on to our next pick here, I decided to go ahead and just get my mega this turn. I figured that I can get this mega secure another form of reliable uh, hazard removal and then i can decide what i get for my next pick depending on what everybody else has so i decided to go ahead and pick up my mega and that is going to be a mega aerodactyl which was a tier 2 mega giving me i believe 40 extra points if I'm not mistaken and that in itself is really huge because if we do make playoffs that's 40 extra points that we can have now of course we can't have Mega Gallade or Mega Gardevoir but I think if it comes down to just matchups in general if Mega Aerodactyl has better matchups than Mega Gallade which I think Mega Gallade is going to have better matchups than Mega Gardevoir anyways then I think I'm definitely going to go Mega Aerodactyl and we can have those extra points to just make our draft even been that much better so mega aerodactyl as many of you should know if you've been sticking with me for a long time now is my absolute favorite mega of all time yes i have been drafting mega gallade a lot recently but mega aerodactyl is an absolute 
beast of a mod. This thing is definitely going to put in a lot of work. And this honestly, in my opinion, is a very solid form of hazard removal. Now, there are going to be those people out there being skeptical and being critics. But if you look at the gigantic speed stat of Mega Aerodactyl, because this is so fast, that enables Mega Aerodactyl to run so much bulk in its defenses that it can become not only a reliable offensive mon, but a reliable defensive pivot as well and a solid form of hazard removal. I know this because I've used Mega Aerodactyl before in the past and it is a beast. It also does have a really good uh, offensive move pool, Aqua Tail pursued the elemental fangs it gets home claws to boost its physical attack i guess it doesn't really have the best forms of stab but they are still going to be able to be doing enough damage because most of the time you're probably going to be running this adamant anyways and that in itself is pretty solid so yeah huge fan of mega aerodactyl i know for a fact this thing will put in work for us these upcoming four games so moving on to our next pick here I wanted to just go ahead and get one last form of hazard removal, which I guess is a little bit odd because I already have Dawn Fan for Rapid Spin. Uh, we have Aerodactyl for Defog. At this point, I can get another Spinner or another Defogger, and I had my eye on a few mons. I think Delmize and Decidueye were still around, so that would have given us double Defog and one more uh, hazard removal in the form of Rapid Spin on Dawn Fan, which is pretty good, I think. I think between those three, we can keep off hazards uh, very easily for our Karen Black. But I wanted to get a different mon, mainly because this also gave me another typing that I think I would have needed, and it would have given me a really nice uh, combination of certain things that I wanted in one mon. It gave me a grass type, it gave me an electric type, a levitating Pokemon, a great Z-mon, a defogger, and a solid Scarfer or even Specsmon. And that is going to be my trusty lawnmower, Rotom Mo. Rotom Mo, as I just mentioned, is such a good mon in my opinion. Now, of course, it could benefit from having a better uh, grass stab, but it still does get access to at least Thunderbolt and Voltwitch, being able to allow it to gain momentum, uh, be a nuisance, trick, toxic, Thunder Wave, and Will O Wisp is amazing supporting moves that Rotamo can be tailor made to run to help the rest of its teammates. And it sits at a solid speed tier as well on base 86. And it makes an amazing uh, pivot mon in general because with Volt Switch, this can come in, take a hit, switch out, gain momentum, bring in our Kiron Black. And Kiron Black absolutely loves free switch ins because so few Pokemon can switch into it so moving on to our next pick here I figured that this is probably my best round to go ahead and get my dark type because there was a few people who didn't have a dark type at this point and I figured I could probably get a water and or a psychic type uh, later on in the draft so I decided to go ahead and get Zorark now initially I wanted Alolan Persian. I was set on Alolan Persian. If I was able to get Alolan Persian, oh my god. <laughs> Damn you, Ben. Damn you, General Tar Hill. I love Ben. Me and Ben are really good friends. We play Fortnite all the time, but just. Uh, Damn you, Ben. He got Alolan Persian the round that I was gonna get it, and he was first on the way back, or. Yeah, I think on the way back and just, oh, it was so upsetting. So I went with the next best thing and uh, that was Zoroark. Now Zoroark is still pretty cool because it gets access to Memento. Now, while Memento is obviously not as good, n not nearly, <laughs> nearly as good, obviously, yeah, dude, there's no chance. Uh, it's not as good as Parting Shot by any sense. They're, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, they're, they're nowhere near as good. But Memento is still something that I can take advantage of because if I can maybe get some setup mons later, I can uh, take advantage of Memento here with Zoroark. And because it's any Z, I can do Z Memento, which Z Memento restores whatever Pokemon is coming in to uh, full HP, if I'm not mistaken. And Z Memento still lowers the opposing Pokemon's 
physical and special attack by two, which is really good. This thing learns Dark Pulse, Knock Off, Sucker Punch, Nasty Plot, Night Slash. Uh, I think, yeah, I get Sword Zance, U Turn, Trick. I do have access to any Z moves with Z Memento. If I want to be aggressive with it, I can set up Sword Zance, Nasty Plots, Calm Minds. You call it, I can probably do it with Zorak, and I'm hoping I can because, again, I really want this mod to put in a lot of work. So, let's move on to our next pick here. Our next pick is going to be Lucario. Now, at this point in the round, unfortunately, every other Steel type I wanted got picked. And it was a little bit upsetting, but I guess it wasn't entirely too bad because Lucario honestly really isn't that bad of a mod. And it's definitely been a Pokemon that I've wanted to use for a while now, but I never want to draft it because it's typing uh, can never really fit into one of my plans or it's just not supportive enough for what I want it to do. Which basically means if Cabalion was around, I would have got Cabalion, but it got picked. So I got Lucario, which I mean, the great thing about Lucario is that offensively wise, it's very difficult to tell if someone's going to run Sword Zance or nasty plot or just a purely mixed set it gets access to so many different types of setup i think it gets like bulk up calm mind nasty plot swords dance agility it got meteor mash too in ultra sun and moon if i'm not mistaken which gives it a reliable uh, hard hitting physical steel stab move which also gives it a chance to boost its physical attack even higher which is amazing so much like our previous mon here in an nez move format this lucario i think becomes even better because it just becomes that much more of a threat where you don't know exactly what it's gonna run and if you don't know what it's gonna run it may be too late and it's already punched enough of a hole that the rest of its teammates are able to just take advantage of that and win so yeah super excited to have lucario first time i've ever drafted it i definitely wanted to put in work so we are going to go ahead and dive into our lower tier picks here now the way i was planning this out i noticed that i can just go ahead and get my psychic and my water type super late in this match because by halfway through the draft everybody already had either a bulky psychic type or a bulky water type and obviously you're not going to draft two of them back to back so I figured that I could probably get Slowbro or Slow King guaranteed at this point. So I was going to get one of those three absolutely dead last. So I could prioritize my other Mons. My second to last Mon, I wasn't entirely too sure what I could get. There were so many different things, uh, so many different Mons that could have gone into that slot. And then my two tier fives that I was mandatorily uh, obligated to get, uh, I wanted to get two of the best ones were a which were a couple combinations of different mons but something i really didn't want to get out of tier 5 was a normal type because i realized that in my first and my second draft i have a normal type for my tier 5 in both of those slots so if i am going to be needing two different tier 5s for the potential playoff draft then I can't afford to draft another normal type because I'm going to have two tier 5 normal types. Now even though they may do different things, they have combined weaknesses and my opponent can take advantage of that so I really don't want to get a normal type here for tier 5. So I realized that one typing I really did want to get was a fire type and the first fire type that came to mind was pyroar i love pyroar i think pyroar is an amazing tier 5 one of the best but it's part normal so i can't get it so immediately the second one that came to mind was the one that i was thankfully able to get and that is going to be magmortar and i'm actually really excited for this i've seen magmortar do so much work in certain matchups it gets belly drum flame charge and general is really good because if you look into the coverage of magmortar here it's able to run so many moves earthquake of course fire blast low kick it's able to run psychic thunderbolt rock slide a uh, supportive wise will-o-wisp and toxic belly drum flame drive of course is absolutely terrifying to deal with it's going to be able to put in so much work especially as a potential Zmon, a Zmon that my opponents may not even 
think I'm going to bring and then I flame charge and then I destroy whatever the wall they have for this and I just sweep. So I'm super excited for Magmortar. I really believe uh, it's going to put in a lot of work here. So moving on to our next pick here. I figured that this is probably my best chance to go ahead and get my tier 5, my second tier 5. And that originally was going to be Garboder. But uh, at this point, our matchups had been shown to us, and I realized that uh, this tier 5 is good in a lot of my matchups, but in the one matchup where it really matters, it's not good in. And the funny thing is, is that that tier 5 got picked, and I ultimately didn't even need to get it because the backup would have had the better matchup in the one game I actually cared about. So I was originally going to get Garboder, but it had got chosen and that was a blessing in disguise because it brought me to Weezing, which uh, personally I've never drafted Weezing before. Honestly, I think Weezing is absolutely terrible. I would rather not draft it over Garboder, uh, mainly for the fact that it's not a grounded poison, which I know sounds dumb because of course with it having Levitate, it's not weak to ground moves, but as a grounded poison, this would be infinitely better, I think, honestly, and I don't think they'll ever give it a second ability, but if they do, I think it would make Weezing uh, not on the pars of Garboder because Garboder can still be pretty offensive and it also has access to regular spikes and not only T spikes, but it would definitely make Weezing a bit more valuable. But I digress, it's just theory modding at this point, obviously. Like, Weezing can still do pretty cool things. It's got Destiny Bond Explosion. Uh, Haze obviously is good. And of course, much like Zoroark, if it's able to Z Memento, we can bring in Belly Drum, Flame Charge, or Mag Mortar. We can bring in uh, Lucario to Agility or Swords Dance. Or we can bring in one of our other potential setup mons with our, our last two picks here there is a lot of great things that wheezing can still do for our draft and of course uh t spikes is always great wheezing uh, no, a uh, will-o-wisp a great move to uh, cripple physical attackers and yeah ultimately for our last four matchups wheezing definitely had a much better uh, matchup than garboder but Typically, I think I would rather draft Garboder than Weezing. So, moving on to our second to last pick. I realized that at this point, I think I needed either a Tier 4 or I needed a Tier 3. Which meant that if I'm not going to get a Tier 3, I can get a Tier 4. Because at this point, I've uh, already gone and gotten my two Tier 3s, if I'm not mistaken. So I decided to go ahead and get a tier 4 Mon that looked so good in my future matchups that I don't think would ever last Mon my opponents would have got uh, really would have affected anything. And that is going to be Linoon. So shouts out to my boy Kelly under the radar. Now Linoon is honestly a sleeper threat. This thing with belly drum and extreme speed is absolutely disgusting. Not to mention that now we have belly drum mag mortar and we have belly drum Linoon. So that's a pretty scary uh, belly drum core there. And again in a format with any Z move I can run double belly drum one uh, I can run Gluttony Belly Drum here, and then I can run Z Belly Drum on Mag Mortar, and there, there's nothing that my opponent can do. So I really, I really think that this is just such a good pickup for uh, this stage in our drafts. Because again, looking at my last four opponents' drafts, Linoon can honestly just absolutely destroy them. With a uh, belly drum extreme speed, it does get some decent coverage moves and play rough and uh, stomping tantrum, uh, seed bomb, shadow claw, uh, even like thunder wave Sitch or switcheroo uh, could come in handy in some matchups. But right now, I feel like Linoon will definitely put in a lot of work. So at this point, we are obviously missing our Psychic and our Water type. And as I mentioned earlier, I could have got either Slowking or Slowbro. And I decided to go ahead and pick up 
slow bro mainly for the fact that we are going to be able to use it more on the physically defensive side which uh my matchups my opponents i think mainly had physically offensive mons and in the one matchup where it really matters slow bro helps me out a lot more than slow king so i will gladly take advantage of that slow bro another the mon that can easily take advantage of any z move because it can run offensive uh trick room z sets it can run uh just defensive z move uh, calm mind in general it can also just be a great supportive mon with a uh, thunder wave and reflect toxic it gets trick it also has some nice coverage moves with a uh, thunderbolts fire blast flamethrower and uh no i don't, I don't think it gets belly drum right no it's slow king oh i should have got slow king just because it would have given me a triple belly drum <laughs> triple belly drum core uh it's fine though but yeah slow bro i think definitely rounded off our squad here very nicely so obviously i 100 percent think that this draft is so much better than our second draft and this is a draft that i really believe is going to win us out the season so we can get into playoffs and win that championship so let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below and i will see you all later on sunday with week number nine against uh one of my very good friends and it's going to be a very very special battle so you won't want to miss it so later everybody Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain, tears or hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real